Christmas times are coming. Christmas is just about here. It's been an interesting year. Been a wild year for sure, and uh, 2021 could be equally or close to as wild, but uh, hopefully we'll be a little more prepared for it then. Um, as far as in the garden, what's going on? Uh, some of my stuff has made a little bit of a comeback. Cabbage, broccoli. Um, I was pretty disappointed, uh, pretty down and out about it, but I, I think uh, things are going to turn around. It's crazy down here. You know, we get, we'll be 30 degrees one day and then shorts and t-shirt the next day. Um, Everything's a little slow in the garden right now. Even the stuff we got growing out there that's small is just kind of holding its own, not doing a lot of growing, just sitting there. But it's that time of the year for us to reflect back and think about what we did good, what we did wrong, what we're going to do. You know, a lot of people get a little cabin fever this time of year, and I got a little something I want to show everybody that I grew this last year to maybe give you a little thought of maybe uh, a little... An idea? Ideas of maybe what you want to do this out of the ordinary for this coming year. I don't know if you, you all that watch the show a lot, but I had a... I had a moment I wanted to show you back during the summertime when I said, you know what, I'm going to grow me some of these bugle gourds. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, that that next day I got and got some planted and uh, really turned out nice. Now, I cut the top out of this one the other day, and these bugle gourds, and I, I'm assuming that's the way you pronounce that, it's B-U-L-E. Mm -hmm. These things are really weird. Some of them you'll have warts on them like this one and then some of them will be more smooth and then they'll have a few warts some of them pretty smooth and it's uh, open pollinated variety so yeah, you would expect to see a little yeah, bit it's of there but it's just they have a lot of character to them i cleaned these up a little bit you have to wash them in some bleach to get some of the mildew off of them these cleaned up real nice i cut the tops off some carried our uh, lady in the office here painted that one right there that's pretty here's another one here but these are, are wonderful to grow especially if you got somebody crafty in the household mm -hmm. it's good wintertime projects to have you can paint them i guess you can make flower bowls out of them i guess you could even eat your cereal out of them mm -hmm. you could do a lot of different things once they it. dry out you kind yep. of clean them out, clean in them there. out a little bit uh, that's a solid bowl they, it ain't. they are known for their real thick rind so it yeah. is it is a bowl variety gourd Mm -hmm. That's not something I'd want to grow every year. It's just like my birdhouse gourds. I grew birdhouse gourds about every three years. But it's always interested, and gourds is one of those things you can grow later in the season. They're really disease and insect resistant, and they do well in adverse conditions. So I planted these and grew them pretty much as a fall crop. Mm -hmm. and they did well. I'd like to have me a few of these keep in my camper. It's you want to you out there on the campground? You want to look sure enough like you? you a mountain man, mountain man, yeah, eating out of a gourd. Here's another one here. Anyhow, I had a few of these that I cleaned up. Want to show everybody on the show? Kind of shaped like an apple almost a little bit, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, they are, and they and some of them's a little different. They pretty much round. They all, I guess, if they grow on the bottom there, then they have a good a good bottom for to sit up straight. If that's the way they sit up in the field. Now you planted these in the field, but then they run up on your fence line beside the yeah, plot. Yeah. Now one thing I I would uh, if you got if you don't have a lot of room, you can trellis these babies. They do really good on a trellis. You would recommend trellis. I would them? recommend trellising if possible. As yeah. opposed to uh, yeah, they do they do well on a trellis. And they 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 have a decent sized fruit there, but they, they seem to hang pretty pretty good uh, uh, on that. It's just yeah. uh, f f livestock fence, what you had basically right had, there. Yeah, I had a cow panel. They they seem to dry out a little better. Uh, that you know, every now and then you'll hit a wire worm or something to get into one, but you don't have that problem if it's on a trellis. They just it'd be a little cleaner on on the trellis, so. If you can, if not, don't worry about it. Grow them on the ground. Grow so, them however so you, you can. let them turn brown on the vine? As much as I could. Then I had to harvest them because they was getting in the way of our new building back there, and some of our help was helping herself to my gourds. Uh -oh. So I had to get them out. You can harvest them once they get nice, hard. They may still have a little green to them. And, uh, and put them in the barn and let them finish drying out. Now, once they dry, does this snap pretty good? You still have yeah. to take pruners and cut them? Yeah, take the pruners and clip them. If you'll notice, all those are nice, clean cuts right there. So, yeah, take your pruners and, and cut them off there. And cut them off. Give yourself plenty of stem, they said. It yep. makes them store a little yep. better there. It does. I like that right there. That is a... Uh, you can have that one. How about that? I will. I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll do... i get my... Uh, Carving knife, sit out there by the fire. Yeah. Uh, my next camping trip, and uh, yeah, whittle this one a little bit, and uh, have me a nice little. 
bowl. A little bowl there. I might there eat. There you go, right there, as everybody. Write my name on it. 125 days of maturity. Don't get no big hurry on them. But it's a good one to plant after you, some of your spring crops come in and you got that extra space out there that you don't know what to put there. Grow you a few gourds. You know what even you could do is take you a little, uh, a little cabinet up puller thing and make you a little handle on there and have mm -hmm. you a little uh, you get crafty on me <laughs> just just coming up with all kind of ideas i yep. like those that yeah that's one of those things like you said uh once spring is done and there ain't a whole lot of prime vegetables to be growing in the heat of the summer uh plant you some of these uh well it really work well is if you if you're growing cucumbers or something like that on a trellis and then you could come right behind them with these gourds and just leave the trellis up and plant on those. Or pole beans. Or pole beans would be better. That'd be a different, a different species. Yeah, that'd be even better. I wonder if some old field corn stalks would hold them up. Probably. Probably. So you could tell if you grew you some field corn in the spring, just go and put some transplants in there. Yep. And let them climb upon yep. that. That might work pretty good. Yep. Um, man, I got some. I always say this as far as cool season cover crops go. To me, clover is one of the prettiest ones. And that frosty clover I got, I got to show this on the video coming up saying, man, it is just beautiful. I just want to get out there and kind of just waller in it. it just, yeah, I love growing clover. It, uh, it, it's just thick and looks so pretty. Um, I got my mustard incorporated uh, this past week. We did a video on that. And um, I've been doing some videos here and there about uh, show it. I got one plot where we're doing no till, and then other plots where we till stuff in. We tilled in that mustard because that's what you have to do for the suppression. And uh, a lot of the the no till army comes after you when you whoop out the tiller. Mm. And um, I've yet to figure out. Uh, I guess I'm not a part of the club, so I don't understand all the rules. But the rules of the no till club seem to be a little bit confusing for me. So let's say, for example. I tilled in that mustard cover crop. Now with the tiller, that grillo, I don't set it very deep. It's probably only about three inches, so it's not cultivating very deep. And um, and man, they just they flip out about that. They they see that piece of equipment there and they just get all upset, all the panties in the wad and everything. But then you mention something like digging sweet potatoes or digging leeks, and I feel like digging sweet potatoes or digging Irish potatoes or digging leeks is way more intensive as far as digging and disturbing the soil than me running that tiller over there three inches. So I, I'm really confused and I'm trying to learn learn the rules of the no-till club. I haven't quite learned them yet, but uh, it, 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 it's confusing to me what is okay and what is not okay. Well, the tiller will, will pulverize the soil a good bit more than what a digging fork will. Right. So you have a little bit. But if your goal is no disturbance, that I mean, when I'm digging leaks, that, I'm putting that fork in well, there I seven, eight inches. Well, I think a better word would be minimal disturbance would be a better, yeah. a better way to look at it. Another thing, too, is a lot of people, these soils have problems with hard pans. So if you till a lot shallow cultivation and you do a lot of it mm -hmm. and you overuse your tiller, then you can create some of those hard pans. So there is some, some, some problems with that. The whole deal is to not do it no more than you need to. Right. I, I try to use it to your advantage. No more than a couple times a year uh, in each plot do it. But uh, like I said, I'm working on figuring out the rules. Once I figure out all the rules, I'll let you know. And um, and uh, maybe they'll let me in the club, the club with my one plot there that I'm doing, but we'll just have to see. Right. Um, I'm still, they still lash at me pretty good when I uh, crank up the tiller and and go to chop something in. So we'll just have to see on that. Uh, last week, we talked about some great gift ideas that we've got, and uh, I'd be doggone if some of them didn't just absolutely disappear. Those hides. They're gone. They're gone. Those picking buckets, those over-the-shoulder picking buckets, they're gone. Uh, so uh, it's just it's what happens. It happens. We told y'all. Told y'all, <laughs> yeah. We'll have more uh, soon. So if you want to, um, if that's what something you really wanted to get somebody, what you can do is you can just go on the website, get them a gift certificate, and then they can purchase one. Oh yeah, we'll have January first. We'll probably have plenty more in somewhere in that neighborhood there. So we'll be okay, but we won't have them in time for Christmas. Yeah, they, they go on. So unfortunately, uh, those that's the only two I can think of that we mentioned on the show that just. Yeah just flew. Uh, today, before we get into uh, our main topic here, 
got some nice little stock in here that Miss Kendall put together for us. And uh, I want to talk about some good stocking stuffer ideas. And uh, let's see what we got in here. Number one here, and these are all things, obviously, as you see, that fit in a stocking. They're not going to break the bank, but great little ideas that if you got a gardener in your life, things they're going to guarantee to love. This one right here, these things, you used to be able to find these things at your local hardware store pretty easy, but you can't find them as much anymore. And it's a corn silk and brush. And I made videos on these and people say, well, why can't you just use a toilet brush or any kind of brush? You got to have some soft bristles on here. You can't be going at no fresh ear sweet corn with some hard bristles because you're going to see them booger it up. And i tell you something else about this one right here. This is an ideal way to find out what kind of woman you have in your life. So you buy one of these corn silken brushes and put in her stocking and watch her reaction when she pulls it down Christmas morning and starts digging through there. And when she pulls this corn silken brush out and her eyes light up and she's happy as she can be. You know you're ready to write choice. You know you got you a good woman. If she's sold up and that lip's pulled out, poked out, may have to evaluate a trade in. Yeah, so I this agree. Is, this is the, probably the best way. A good useful tool, but a good way to evaluate your uh, your spouse in your life right there. Good little test right test there. Test right there. Yep. Yep. Let's see what else we got here. Garden labels. Everybody can use these. Anybody that grows a garden will use them for transplants. We use a lot of use them. Use them in your raised beds and mark. And these markers here that would come with them. We used to sell them markers separate. Now we just put a marker in there with them. We've got these in 12 packs and 100 pack, but this marker right here works way better than a Sharpie. You write on these with a Sharpie, as soon as water gets on, it's gonna wash it off. These uh, markers here are specifically designed for outdoor use and writing on these. And I, I like these wooden ones because they biodegrade. I can just leave them out there and uh, yep. ain't gonna hurt anything. Our garden planner. This is a popular little tool here. And uh, we're out of those. We are? Uh-oh, didn't know that. Anyway, I'll show it to somebody. When they do come back in, nice little slide chart there. You you just pick your, uh, line it up with your first to last frost date. You got spring on one side, fall on the other. Handy tool, unfortunately. Another reason to buy that gift certificate. Yeah, you can add a garden planter to we'll have We've got them on order, should have them before long. Mm. One of them things. What else we got here? This unit right here. I use this baby all the time, especially making sauerkraut and stuff. Even in that big crock I got, that big five gallon um, clay crock, uh, ferment and crock I got, I use this baby right here, kind of mash my uh, cabbage up. Nice, nice little tool. You got your regular size jar in, your wide mouth jar in. If you're making pickles, any kind of uh, stuff, that's a good way to pack stuff in the jars without running it too much. And yeah, it's nice hardwood, so leave it by your door there when you're not using it to pack your jars. If you need to get on somebody's head, that's a good place to leave it right there. You pick it up right there and you can whoop on somebody right there with that. You hit somebody with that right there. Yeah. You, a couple you... times there and you won't have no more trouble. No more lip out of it. <laughs> See what else we got here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is a this is a everybody needs them one of these, whether you use it to wipe your nose or keep sweat out your eyes. Nice little horse bandana there. We got a pepper one and we got an okri one, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh Yep, you wear it John Wayne style around your neck there, keep your neck warm when it's cool, and if you have to Use it for a mask, just pull it straight up there and you use it for a mask if you get in the pinch. That's about the most stylish mask you could want right mm -hmm. there. And it comes in this nice little cloth bag that you can yep. use for lots of other stuff. What else we got here? There's a lot of stuff fitting this stocking right here. Oh, these things right here. My wife absolutely loves these things. And um, we have them in regular mouth and wide mouth. But these screw on top of your mason jars and you got the little flip lid there. You can pour it. We store, we use these to, um, we keep dry stuff in mason jars with them. We put our coffee in there when we go camping and use these tops. But we also put wet stuff in there. Uh, makes it real easy to pour out of a mason jar. And uh, I, like I said, we just use these all the time. When you order them, you get one of each color, a regular mouth, wide mouth. They're called multi-top 
jar lids and uh, just something really, really handy to have. Uh, so you can pour out of a mason jar, you can leave this on there. Works you're like not storing chunk. your food in your mason jar and you empty it out and uh, gives you a reason to use those mason jars in other times of the year. You mm -hmm. don't have it full of vegetables. Yeah. What else we got? Got one more thing in here, I think. Koozies. It's a good little stocking stuffer if you've got a hoss fan in your life. Good little neoprene thing there. Works good in the summertime, keep your drink cold. In the wintertime, keep your hands from getting mm -hmm. cold. Um, so, awesome little stocking stuffers. I think that's it. Stocking yes, stuffers there. You can fit a lot in a stocking. Yes, you can. A lot of good, good gear in a stocking there. Y'all go on the website and check those out. We got all those in stock except the garden planner. Well, you I can not to the garden planner with a gift certificate. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Take care of that. All right, what else? We got some new varieties I want to talk about. Now, a lot of these, in fact, all of them, maybe except one, are varieties that our wonderful customers and viewers suggested that we carry. Most of these are tomatoes, for the exception of one. And um, some of them are, are heirlooms, and um, we like to have a good rounded selection of everything, hybrids and heirlooms. So these are varieties that our customers told us you need to have these. We love them. We would order them from y'all if y'all had them. So I um, was kind of diligent in making sure I added some of these. Let me go through a few of these. I think this is the only one that's not an heirloom. This one here is called Container's Choice Red Tomatoes. So for those of you who are limited on space, got a patio garden or maybe a raised bed and you don't want to stake up a whole row of tomatoes, you just want to grow one or two plants and kind of tie it to a stob, this is the way to go right here. So this is a kind of a dwarf, a determinate tomato and uh, the plant's not going to get that tall, but it's going to load up with fruits and um, not going to require a huge elaborate trellis for these, but a really good tasting tomato and uh, great for pots, raised beds. You could grow them in an in-ground garden uh, as well. Yeah, but we had some other day mention again about you know, some of these determinate tomatoes, if they just come off at one time, if they've never grown determinate tomatoes. The book says they come off at one time, but actually they don't. They have kind of like three different little mini crops to them. They have a bottom crop, which comes in first, your middle crop and your top crop. Oh man, they'll last you somewhere between two to three weeks when they start coming. Yeah, maybe a yeah, little bit longer. Yeah. I'd say my harvesting window is, in, is is close to four weeks with about three. Picking them once a week, going in there and picking anything that's turning. Yeah. Um, if you grow in a container, you definitely want to determine it. Yeah, to make. yeah. And this one right here is a dwarf determinant, which is going to be even more ideal for you smaller scalers out there. And that would be a good one if you were. If you had never grown determinants and you wanted to dabble in the determinant, you could just grow you a couple in a pot and you could see how you like them. Yep, like them. All right, that's, a few more. That's one word, like them. Yeah, a few more tomatoes here. And these are ones uh, our customers suggested. This one here, green zebra tomato. A lot of people really big fans of this one. Now, is it ripe? Is it green? Is it ripe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got a nice little tangy flavor to it. Uh, it's not big as a slicer. It's probably... Um, about like the size of a racquetball. So it's not a huge tomato, but it's bigger than a cherry tomato. We have it in the cherry tomato uh, classification on the website, but it's bigger than a, a normal cherry tomato. I think it comes in about the size, maybe a little bigger than that black cherry. You remember yeah. growing those? Yeah. Those were about golf ball size, maybe a hair a bit bigger than those. Um, these are really good to kind of just quarter up, put on a salad. Uh, salsa, you just I'm eat them raw. Yeah, yeah, you can make good green salsa out of them. And and these are ripe once that yellow. You see that yellow one yeah. right there appears. So you're not waiting on them to turn a particular color. They'll be real green at first, and once they get the kind of that yellow shading, they're ready to pick. Hmm. That's indeterminate. I thought it was. This one here is a big, uh, popular heirloom out there that a lot of people rave about. And I might try growing one or two plants of them. The German Johnson tomato is a real popular, big, nice, meaty heirloom tomato. A lot of people rave about this one, so uh, we're going to give that one a shot this year. This one here is another popular one. You see a lot of the, the people are big fans of heirloom tomatoes. They rave about this one, this Kellogg's Breakfast Tomato. Hmm. Um, it got the name, the, the guy who kind of 
started really growing it. His last name was Kellogg, and they call it breakfast tomato because it the the juice inside looks like an orange, uh, really bright orange, really big kind of meaty heirloom tomato. Not as not as acidic. Anytime you got a yellow or orange tomato, not quite as acidic as the red ones. Uh, so it might be a good option to eat for breakfast. And then this one, I'm interested in trying because uh, I've heard a lot of people rave about it. And this one, although it is heirloom, it is supposed to be um, resistant to early blight. And that's the Abe Lincoln here. Hmm. A lot of people swear by this one as an indeterminate that they like to grow. And uh, supposedly it produces some tomatoes in nice big clusters there. So I want to try one or two of those, see what all the fuss is about. But that's one a lot of people ask for. The, the last one here is not a tomato, but this is a flower a lot of people have been asking about, which is nasturtium. Now, nasturtium has quite a few benefits. Uh, you can eat the flowers. The flowers are edible. A lot of people really? use them in salads as a garnish, have a good little peppery flavor to them. Uh, also really good for pollinators, attracting beneficial insects. Hummingbirds will get on these things. This particular variety here, this tip top mix, the reason it's called tip top is because all the flowers kind of grow on top of the plant there. This is more of a dwarf variety. It's not going to get very tall. You can plant them real thick and um, good for just have interplanting in the garden, having for your pollinators, your beneficial, but you can also eat those flowers and uh, have a nice little tasty addition to I'm your salad. I'm assuming that is a summer flower. Yes, warm yes, season warm flower. season. You want to wait till your, your last frost date there in spring for your now you plants. Would, you would just direct seed these, right? The seeds that you can fill in there. The seeds are pretty big, yeah. um, so you can just direct. You could transplant them, but I would just direct seed them. That's a good one. Uh, a lot of people like to grow those with kids because they're really easy to grow, really easy to direct seed. Um, a lot of other flower seeds that are tiny, yep. and they're just really easy to plant. That'd be great for a school garden. Would be excellent for a school garden to, to kind of teach the um, the benefits of having flowers and pollinators. And how in the easy garden. they are to grow. That's right. All right. So every now and then we get somebody who uh, comments on the videos and gives us an awesome idea for a show topic and um, I thought this was a great one and I don't remember they only mentioned like three or four crops but I kind of elaborated out to ten but the the general idea here was if you could only pick one so let's imagine you had a small garden 20 by 20 40 by 40 that's all you had and uh, you wanted to plant a decent variety of things in there but you you know, that's all the space you got. So you got to pick one variety of each crop. And uh, so we got 10 different crops here we're going to go through. And uh, we're going to tell you, if you only pick one, which variety we would choose to grow. It's a great subject for me because this oh, year, Georgia, you know, this year I'm experimenting with growing a smaller garden and doing more compact Intensive. Intensive gardening because a lot of people we have out there don't have a huge area or don't need, and that's what I've come to realize, don't need a huge garden. So I'm bringing the garden in this year to something like a 20 by, I think it may be like 40, 20 by 40. And then we're going to do some walkways in there. We're going to do some smaller plants. So this is a good exercise for me to go through to find out what I need to plant and what not. I'll put all my choices in my, my bowl. bowl gourd there. All right, so we got 10 different crops here. Let's go through here. And uh, we have not discussed these beforehand, so we may have some of the same ones. Uh, let's start off with tomato. You want to go first? Yeah, tomatoes. I cheated on that one just a little bit. <clears throat> so my first choice on my regular tomato, of course, if you watch much of the shows, you'll know I'm a big fan of the Bella Rosa. The Bella Rosa to me would be my go-to tomato on my sandwich tomatoes. However, I would have to plant me one or two, and we don't have them packed yet, but I would have to plant one or two of the Mountain Vineyard, which is a cherry tomato. We're waiting on the packs on waiting those. On we packs, should have please. those. They're on the way. We should have those packed in the next week or so. So for my sandwich tomatoes, be the Bella Rosa, and I'd have to have a couple, whether I did it in containers or I did it on the side of my garden, and I wouldn't need more than a couple of plants on them, but I'd have to have me some of those mountain vineyards. Yeah, 
Good idea. I went with the Bell Rose was a great choice, but I went with this one, which I grew last year and really liked. And uh, the productivity was right up there with the Bell Rose, and that is the summer pick tomato. Really good uh, disease resistance on this. Good flavor, good production, and uh, just just really like this one. The red snapper would would be right up there uh, with this one, but we don't have that one on the side. So I went with the summer pick tomato, a great winner in my opinion. And both of those are determinant tomatoes. Yes, they are. On the peppers, then I picked the Mama Mia. What's that word right there? Uh, it's Italian. I know, Giallo. Giallo. I went with the uh, Mamma Mia Giallo pepper, and the reason I did is because the majority of the way I really enjoy eating my peppers is grilling them, stuffing them, and this one is a great one right here. And you can also stir fry with it. I'm not a huge bell pepper fan. If I was, I would have picked one of those. I don't care a lot for peppers in my salads. Mm -hmm. I love to grill them and to stuff them, and that's the reason I went with this baby right here, and it's pretty. It's a nice pepper. Yeah, I love bell peppers, and I always grow a few, but I didn't pick a bell pepper variety. I picked the variety that I've grown and just got the most pepper production and a good, well-rounded pepper that you can do a lot of things with. So I picked a cubanelle, and this Aruba cubanelle we've got here, it just loads up. And they're, they're big enough to stuff. Do They're good to eat raw. they got a nice little flavor to them, hardly any heat. And uh, this was a hard choice because there was a lot of good bell pepper options yep. there, a lot of good options. But if I could only grow one, I would grow this Aruba Cubanelle. On the cucumbers, <laughs> I went with a pickle because I enjoy grow. If I can, I grow some slicers. But if I if I had to choose, and I'm having to choose here between a pickle and a slicer, I always go with a pickle because it's dual purpose for me. We can slice them and pick up pickles, but we can also eat them fresh and slice them up. And that's the reason. That a pickle to me is a little more versatile. And I went to Clipso. Clipso is a variety that we've been growing for a couple of years now, and it's one of those that loads up with those female flowers and is really productive. If it was just me, I probably would have picked a pickling variety as well. My wife really likes the slicers. Um, so I went with a slicer variety, and while we have lots of great options, Stonewall, Diomede, my favorite at this moment, now I am uh, liable to change my mind at any point in time, but my favorite one currently is the Olympian. Um, it's got it's got oasis, it's got an awesome disease package as the Diomede and Stonewall do, but the uniformity on the size of these and, and kind of the perf the percentage of perfect shaped cucumbers you get uh, is very high. And um, so the Olympian is currently number one on my list hmm. as far as cucumbers go. Squash, and uh, squash was tough for me because I didn't know if we were going with winter squash or summer squash. Oh, summer squash. Yeah, I figured in, in this situation you probably wouldn't have room to grow winter squash. So I picked the gentry squash, and the reason I did is because I'm, I'm old school a little bit, and I do like a, uh, a crook neck. So I got me a crook neck here. Gentry is a hybrid variety that is... 45 days maturity, and this is probably one of the easiest squashes to grow. It has a little bit of disease package on it, helps you there. It's nice, smooth skin. Gentry is all around great squash, and it being a crook neck made my decision easy. All right. I went with a crook neck as well, but I went with Mr. Gold Star here because I grew this one last year and uh, just super, super impressed with it. Uh, I like a good, I like a straight neck, but uh, these crook necks are, are, are neat to grow. You got to be a little more careful harvesting them. Um, so I went with the Gold Star. Um, a, a close second would have been the Slick Pick. I almost grabbed that one just because it produces so much. But uh, we're going with the Gold Star today. All right, the next one, and this was this is going to be interesting right here. Silver Queen on the corn for me. Sweet, well, I wrote corn, but we meant sweet corn. Yeah, I went sweet corn there, and I, I I went back and forth a little bit, and I ended up getting this one. This one I know performs well for me. I know I like it. It's easy to silk. It's an old open pollinated variety. That's it, a hybrid, actually. Oh, Silver Queen's a hybrid? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yo, P would be something like a, um, Stoll's Evergreen would be considered an heirloom. What about corn. Silver King? It's it's a it's a S E hybrid. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's I went with Silver Queen. I've probably grown more Silver Queen than I have any other variety in my life. 
I know you didn't go with silver coin. That's the reason I wanted to pick it up. Yeah, I went with uh. You went and this sugar wings. Well, this is this is something that uh, if you ask me, um, middle of next summer I might have changed my mind. It, it, there's too many good ones out there, and so I'm just uh, there's a little bit of recency bias here, and I'm growing with the one that I grew the latest that I really really liked, and that was this temptress here, and this is one I grew as a second succession planting and I was super impressed at how well it went on into summer into the heat and the production of it and uh, we put some up and man it it, it froze well just um, just a really really good corn variety so the temptress which is a quad sweet I believe it's one of those sweet sweet yeah quad anyway that's my favorite at the moment Greens, the greens category. You skip taters. I skip taters. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and we'll come back on taters. Okay. About that. On the greens, when I picked the Savannah mustard, which is a, a mustard I just been introduced to a couple of years ago, and this one's a little different, and I grow it a little different. It's really productive. Uh, does well as stir fry. We like to stir fry our mustards down, cook them down fast. Fast. But you know, this is one of these that goes against the grain the way we're used to growing our old broadleaf mustard. So you go out there and you just stroll your, and I got some growing out there now, you, str you stroll, and that's the word for broadcast, mm -hmm. your broadleaf mustard out there and you let it come up and grow. These right here lend themselves well to planting and transplanting. You can. Yeah, they do well, especially if you got a small area. We got a raised bed out in the house, and we've got some of these in that the, which she transplanted in, and they have done extremely well. About 12 inch spacing on there. It's a very good mustard. I like to make me a little kind of elevated bed and just just pour the seeds on there and then I can just go through and cut them like a lawnmower almost. That's how I like Yeah, to you can, but these right here do well as a tree. I was amazed at how, how big you want to let them get. Yeah, how small of an area that, that produces a lot for two people. Fastest growing mustard is yeah. that I've ever seen. 20 days to maturity. Uh, I went with uh, a different kind of green. I went with a collard green and my old Top Bunch 2.0. Now, uh, for those of you who like different types of collards, we have been adding several different varieties. We got one, we got a Vates collard on the site now, a Flash collard. We got several other varieties coming. But uh, my favorite currently is the Top Bunch 2.0. And um, something, even down here, we can grow nine months out of the year. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, good thing to have in your garden. All right, so it's back to Irish potatoes, and we don't have those in, but we're going to talk about them anyway. Only could plant one. It would have to be the Yukon Gold for Greg. Yeah, I, I would. I, I couldn't argue with that. There's lots of good choices out there, but uh, as far as productivity and uh, taste and storage ability, uh, to me, that one there kind of has it all. And, uh, As we say, it's got the butter already built in. Nice but, yellow flesh inside. It's just a good yeah. looking potato. Yep. All right. Now to, you know, mess me up skipping around. Now to onions. Onions. I went with sweet harvest onion. Uh, the reason I did is because I like a flatter onion, and uh, I've grown these this year, and sweet harvest onion works well for me. If it doesn't matter, you want a globe type onion, it's easy to move over to one of the others. But I'm just kind of old school again, and I like those flat onions. I picked a flat onion as well. Mine, uh, uh, a little bit of recency bias here as well, because these were the ones I planted the earliest, and uh, man, they looking good. In my garden and that's these plethora of onions uh, and this is one of those varieties you really ain't gonna find anywhere else and uh, I got these planted late October I'm gonna move my onion planting up I think I think yeah, I, I, I agree with you there I've, I've, I've experimented some this year with staging them out at two week intervals and I can go back and see my first ones that I planted are doing so much better than the ones I planted later. They took the frost better. They, they, did. Did, they did everything. So we always said November, but I, I believe late October is when I'm going to aim my, yeah. aim get my onions yeah. in the ground. I, 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 now, push the, it up the a little tails bit. to see, I'm seeing a little bit of blight on some of mine. I noticed yesterday, and I've got to see about that. It's the first time I've seen blight this early in the year. It's got me a tad bit concerned. I haven't seen any of that. No. Uh, I burnt mine a couple times, come in there pretty hot with some fertilizer, but... Uh, the plethora is, uh, 
I'm super, super impressed. We'll see how big of an onion we get, but as far as just looking at the plants, uh, looks like it's gonna be a good one. On the lettuce, I picked a romaine because I love romaine lettuce. And it has more of an upright um, growth habit to me. Some of these other lettuces we have have a tendency to get some crown rot. These coastal romaines, uh, being a romaine, grows more up. So if it does turn off wet and cool, it's not as apt to have a problem with the crown rot. Plus, I simply just love romaine lettuce. Yeah, romaine's good. I went with uh, more of a, what I kind of consider a spring crisp style lettuce, something that doesn't form a real compact head, but uh, one that holds really well. And been my favorite the last couple of years is Tejama lettuce. Just uh, lots of different uses for it. And um, nice heat tolerance we get from it. If we plant it earlier in the fall, uh, good pelleted seeds, easy to put in the ground. We transplant this, but uh, that's my favorite right now, it's a Tejama. This was okra, and I'm gonna throw a curveball at you here. So okra, I picked the Jing Orange Okra, and the reason I did is because this is a new variety I've never grown before, and I do like to try something new because you never know if you're gonna like it or not till you try it. Now, I don't, Expect this to be as productive as the jambalaya. Hands down, jambalaya is going to kick tail on that. But it's unique, something different, and that's the reason I would pick this one to grow this year is my one and only okra. It does come highly recommended. Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to grow any more okra. You do grow okra? Now, all I'm growing is okra. Okra. So, um... No more okra, I'm just growing okra. Well, I'm going to grow okra this year. I may switch over after that. So, for okra, my favorite okri, as y'all probably know, is the jambalaya okri. And um, I've got lots of videos on this. We've done trials and trials and trials of it. And uh, it just, just outperforms the others. Every now and then we'll get somebody that comments. They, they trialed it and they liked another variety better. But I've, I've, I've not heard that. I've seen that on occasion, and uh, I, I'm not sure, because I have done the trial. It wasn't like I just did it one year. We've done it over and over and over, and it, it just the results are always the same. It's pretty predictable. So as far as okra goes, to me, uh, you can't beat that one. The only downside to it is it's going to start producing about a foot tall, so you're going to have to bend over to cut it initially. And, <clears throat> and this is the only complaint we get about it. People that don't like to pick the okra, but about every three or four days, uh, it's gonna get tough once it gets about five, six inches long. So yep. it needs to be picked about three, four inches long, it needs to be picked every other day. Some cases you get enough rain, you can pick it every day, but uh, you can't beat it for productivity. So there you have some, something. And compact, I'll say one more thing about the jambalaya okra. People ask, they say the okra plants get too tall on them. This one will stay shorter, longer than any of them. Than any of them. It, it's a it's a more compact plant. Even when I stripped the side branches off of it, it was not even three quarters as tall as all them other varieties. I had to cut all them down before I cut these down because I ain't getting on a ladder to cut okra. As my buddies say that I say a lot. That jambalaya's the cat's meow. Cat's meow. My bowl's empty, that means that was it. So, good little uh, fun thing to do there if you could only pick just one. And for you, those of you watching out there, you don't have to, to give us all 10, but if you'd like to, we'd love to hear about it. Let us know, and it doesn't have to be for, you know all varieties we carry, but let us know what your 10 would be of those crops we mentioned, and uh, maybe that would give us some good ideas at other varieties to add in the future uh, if you've got some in there that we don't carry. Yeah, and it being Christmas season, we're in the Christmas spirit a little bit, and we're going to do something a little different this year. I say this year, this show, and we're going to do a couple of giveaways. Yeah, so we usually answer questions about this time, but we're not going to answer questions this week. Uh, given it being the Christmas season, uh, I wanted to grant a couple Christmas wishes here, and uh, I pick one, and you pick one. Um, so we have a lady, um, and I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce her last name, but uh, Miss Carol Avant, as that may be said wrong, but I'm, that's the way I'm going to pronounce it right now. Miss Carol Avant, she's been a long time viewer of our shows. I won't say she watches every video, but she comments on just about every one. And um, 
great gardener. She posts a lot of pictures of her garden in our Road by Road group. She's been milking her backyard for as much as it's worth, just growing as much food as she can in there. And she's been waiting a couple of years to move to a new property where she's got more land and she can sure enough grow a big garden. And um, last I heard from her on one of the comments, she's getting ready to make that move. She already uses our drip tape layer and buries the drip tape, but she has to, she's only got one wheel hose, so she has to swap it back and forth. And um, so, Miss Carol, we're going to send you a new double wheel hose for Christmas. Ooh. Yep. And that way you can have a dedicated wheel hose just for that drip tape layer and laying your drip tape. And that's going to save you a lot of time when you move to that new spot. So I, I imagine she's watching the show. If not, uh, if y'all know Miss Carol, let her know. We already have her address, so we can send it right to her. But hopefully she's watching. And um Hopefully, she and everybody else out there has a Merry Christmas. Sweet lady. She's always an inspiration to all of us, the way she loves to grow. Never hesitates to uh, sp help spread the word. Yep. So my pick would be for Mr. Tom Matthews. Mr. Tom's been a supporter of our channel and our business for a long time. And Mr. Tom, back during the springtime, was doing some transplant, and he had to whittle him out a stick uh -oh. to make him a dibble. And he posted that on the Road by Road group showing his uh, dibble, his uh, wh whittled out stick. So what we thought was we'd send him a nice single dibble wheel to attach to his wheel hoe, because he does have a wheel hoe, mm -hmm. to attach it to it so he can run through there and not have to be whittling out sticks anymore. I'd save him a lot of time. He, he likes to wait on his onions, so he'll be putting in his onions soon, and uh, that dibble wheel works like a he's charm a, for putting in onions. He's an Alabama boy over there in Leeds, Alabama, uh -huh. and a great guy, uh, loves to cook. We see a lot of pictures of, of what he likes to cook, and uh, he's like us. He likes to eat, too. And we have his address as well. I know he'll be watching, so we'll get that on the way from him. Hopefully, we can get that there before Christmas. I don't see no reason why we shouldn't no, I don't uh, be able to. So, um, Tom and Carol, thank you all for watching uh, over the years and being a great supporter, and we hope you enjoy this little little token of uh, <clears throat> our appreciation for you guys uh, sticking with us all those years. Yep. All right, so next week, next Thursday is Christmas Eve and um, probably gonna take a break off next week. Yep. Uh, so everybody can enjoy time with their friends and family around the holiday season. Everybody stay safe, but enjoy. Uh, everybody have a good Merry Christmas there. So we won't be here next week and uh, we'll try to catch back up with y'all the next Thursday will be New Year's Eve. We'll just have to see on that. Stay tuned on our Road by Road group. We'll make an announcement for that. Uh, but we'll just have to see then. But definitely no show next week on Christmas Eve. And um, we just appreciate. It's been a crazy wild year here. And um, just want to say we appreciate all of our customers, all of our viewers. And uh, couldn't do it without you guys. Absolutely. And from our family to yours, we wish you all a happy and Merry Christmas. And... Uh, Hope you enjoyed the show, and as always, give us a big thumbs up if you did. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, ring that jingle jingle, ring that bell so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy tonight's show, check out these other two videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.